Okay, here's a video describing the process that I used for making the profiled ribs for the horizontal stabilizer and also for the vertical stabilizer for my bear hawk. I decided to go with these uh, profiled ribs uh, for performance aspect and also just for looks. I think they'll look a lot better on the bear hawk than just having it flat. But there's a, a little bit you have to do to get to this point when you take a piece of raw sheet metal and turn it into a rib. And I'm going to show you the process that I used and hopefully it might uh, be of value to you. Okay, the next step in the process is how do I turn a piece of sheet metal like this into a profile rib that I can put either a horizontal or vertical stab. Well first off you need a form block. I went to the Home Depot Aerospace Supply Center and got some 1x3 oak and made this form block. It's important to use some pretty tough wood for the form block because we have this, it's 4130 even though it's condition A, 32 thousandths, 21 gauge. Uh, it's still a little bit tough to bend over or to form. So you want to make sure that whatever you're going to be forming it over is going to hold up against uh, the abuse that it's going to take when you're actually doing the forming. So how I got that, sh how did I get the shape? What I did is I took a paper template, got the exact size that I needed for the particular rib that I was making, and then I went ahead and put a tick mark on the oak beginning to end, and that marked the edge of the cord line. I got some rubber cement, glued the template onto the wood, and then making sure it was straight. And I'd sight down the template just to make sure it didn't move, because the paper actually, it's not very stable lengthwise, and it can wander all around. I did try putting some tape on each end, and trying to draw the outline on the wood with my uh, Sharpie pen, and also then with a pencil. But I ended up getting some little whoop de doos on this, on the wood, and I wasn't able to get a really nice smooth line. Uh, the pen tip would catch into the, uh, the grain of the wood, or I would actually move the template itself. So I just ended up gluing it down. I used, like I said, some rubber cement on here, and then I went ahead and, and glued it to the, uh, to the wood. Took it to the bandsaw, cut out the rough shape uh, within you know eighth of an inch of the edge of the paper. Then I took it over to my belt sander, and then I just snuck up on it really easy on both sides, and just went ahead and uh, sanded up to the the paper, and it came out really nice that way. After I sanded that, I went ahead and took my palm sander, just knocked this edge a little bit off, relieved it, gave it a nice radius, so when the metal goes bends over. It actually forms a nice radius in the metal and it's not too sharp. There is another thing that you need to do is have a backup for the form block. This is made out of oak. This is what mistakes are for, I guess. This is the one that I did first with the wandering line and it didn't turn out very well, so it turned out being a backup block. So you'll need a backup block to help hold, sandwich this sheet metal so it doesn't bow out as you were forming it over the form block. The last thing that we need to do is you need to drill some 3 16 holes, or at least that's what I use, 3 16 uh, for some pins to align not only the form blocks, but also to align the sheet metal. I uh, put them 3 inches from each end, and just so I know that I oriented the form block the correct way and I keep on using it the correct way. I put little arrows here on the end so when the arrows meet I know that that's the proper um, orientation for the backup lock in order for these little pins to fit in correctly. If you turn it upside down or 180 degrees it would actually kind of mess things up a little bit but you can see that the 3 16 pins are ni nice and snug and they don't move around at all. The other thing on the backup block, if you can see, I don't know if you can see or not, but this is lower, this surface is lower than the nice form block here. That allows you to get that radius down and be able to form it. I'll show that in a little bit. But it's important that the backup block is just a little bit smaller than the form block. So to drill the locating holes, 
in the sheet metal. Take your form block, make sure that the radius is up because what you're going to do is you're going to drill the holes and then the holes are going to be lined up for putting over the form block. Just remember what orientation you have. So you line this up. If you notice I've already cut this sheet metal. Uh, the width is about 5 eighths a little bit more than the width of the form block on each side. And then distance from the edges, maybe an eighth of an inch total. You need to go wide here because this is the flange. On the ends, if you go too long on the ends, it'll end up giving it a really weird looking little snout on the end at the, where it doesn't go over the form block. So stay pretty tight on this end. On, in the middle part, just make sure that uh, you have the proper distance. And I'll talk about the gauge block here in a second. Just making sure that I have the proper distance here on this particular rear blank. So I do, so I'll take my clamps. Clamp it to the edge. Double check one more time that I have my spacing. I do, it didn't slip. So I got my drill with my 3 16 bit. I'm going to go ahead and I'll drill these holes for the locating pins. Next what we have to do is draw the outline for the rib itself. And what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a, uh, a, a black sharpie marker and I've got my gauge block. You've seen me use it here a couple times. What this is is just a piece of 5 8 plywood and uh, that gives me the correct distance uh, of this flange or the width of the flange when it's folded over. That includes the setback for the radius. What I do with this little gauge block here, blow all the goodies off the sheet metal, just start on one end, lay it up against the form. And if you can't get to it because of the clamp, that's no big deal. You can go ahead and uh, push it through and then move the clamp and then see here it won't pass underneath. It's just a little bit too thick. That's okay. Just be very careful when you move the clamp that the wood doesn't move. side that I need to put on top of the form block to roll over. Next I've got to take this over to the shear and cut along the line. Okay, so here we are at the shear. I just wanted to show you here again on this uh, piece of sheet metal. I went back and remarked that I used a really thick sharpie just so you could see the line over there uh, from a distance. But I went back just with a fine sharpie and I just drew the same line except it's thinner. So now I have a really nice thin guide. Anytime I cut sheet metal, I know at least for, with the shear and probably just with any other type of shear, it always leaves some type of a rolled edge. 
Uh, so what I want is I want that rolled edge, even whatever, however slight it is, I want that rolled edge to be under the rib. In other words, under the flange of the rib. Let's say this is the rib, this is the flange. I want that rolled edge to be down here. So this is the top. I marked it this way. So I'm going to make sure that I cut from here on this side and then turn it this way. That way the rolled edge is the same on both sides. And what I'll do first is I'll do a, uh, a cut, just kind of rough cut about an eighth of an inch from the line, just to kind of eliminate that really thick curl of metal. It helps it um, pass through if you do that first. I know it takes a little bit more time, but I think it makes a better product. So there's the first go. Take a bite. So you can feel it. You can feel that old rolled edge on the bottom. All right. Got the big chunks out of the way. Now I'm going to go ahead and Cut along the back side. Be careful, these things here, they are sharp. I don't know how many, well, you can see, band-aids. Oops, hard to get a line there. There we go, it's right on the line. You can hear the little curl on the bottom. If that was a lot thicker metal, I'd have a little bit harder time pushing it through, but that tiny little curl doesn't give me a whole lot of resistance as I'm pushing it through. As you can see, this is the final cut. I'm not going to need to do anything more to that edge. Close to the end. And there we go. You can see the nice little curl that it gave out. And that's the finished edge. It's ready to go into the form block. I'll go ahead and do the other side.